Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, uh, we will continue our lectures in this uh, optimal control guidance and estimation course and this is uh, a different topic, so somewhat related and we need that sometime and hence I thought I will cover one lecture at least on this, this topic actually. This is called discrete time optimal control. Yeah. So far we have seen everything in the continuous time domain all the time, we talk about x dot equal to f of x u and the lambda dot and things like that. And many times uh, discrete time uh, formulation also has some beauty and you can design algorithms in a better way and things like that way. Okay. In fact, some of our algorithms later that we discuss in this course will actually rely on this discrete time, discrete time optimal control. So, this particular lecture I will just give you some sort of an overview of that uh, uh, including generic theory followed by LQR in discrete time as well actually. Okay. So, that is uh, that is the motivation for this particular lecture. The outline happens to be something like this, uh, first is uh, generic formulation and essentially again will lead out, it, it will lead us to this, uh, this necessary conditions of optimal ED. Then one, uh, one example will follow and then we will move it to some discrete time LQR design and in uh, for your information this uh, MATLAB also has a DLQR function, DLQR stands for discrete time LQR actually. Then on the way we will also see an idea, the, one of the very earlier ideas, okay, how people thought of solving in LQR formulation using discrete LQR sort of ideas uh, in least squares setting basically. So, you convert the entire formulation, take the discrete grid points in time and all the state vectors are equivalently converted to some sort of a control vector and all that actually, then uh, an initial condition of course. When the initial condition happens to be just a time, I mean just a number, it, uh, it does not play a role in terms of minimization, maximization like that and things like that. So, we will, I will take you through that when, I mean in that appropriate slide actually. Then we will also have some sort of a, a discussion on discrete time LQ tracking problem. So, so far we have been talking about regulator, regulator all that, the LQR, R stands for regulator. But if you really want to extend it for, uh, for tracking applications, this is called something like linear quadratic tracking problems. Okay. Similar concepts are available in continuous time as well and we have actually talked a little bit about that. We will talk more in the SDRE uh, setting when, the, when we talk about SDRE lecture as well. But here we talk about discrete time LQR and discrete time LQ tracking issues, uh, tracking problem. How will you formulate? How will you get a solution like that actually? So, this is what is coming up in, in this uh, lecture basically. So, uh, here is a equivalent representation of optimal control problem in discrete time. The performance index happens to be something like this and uh, this is the terminal penalty and this is the path penalty sort of thing. And when you talk about discrete time, we, there is no specific advantage of uh, having a linear time invariant or time varying system. So, everywhere we will consider as much as possible, these are all time varying things actually. So, L can be a constant function, but L can be different at different points of time also. That, that is why this LK is represented here. Okay. K stands for uh, K varies from I initial condition, I plus 1, I plus 2 like that up to N minus 1 and actually it will lead to this uh, Xn in system dynamic equation. This is the system dynamics. Okay. So, Xk plus 1 is a function of Xk uk. Most of the time we will see that L and F, these are all st static functions. They are functions of X and U, but they are the function itself do not change with time. Okay. But as I told, uh, in discrete time that has, has no specific advantage. So, for generality, for more generic results and all that, we will consider that F, F can be a function of time as well. That means, uh, F, the very nature of F can, can differ from time to time actually. Okay. Similarly, L can be, I mean L can have time dependence as well as that way. Anyway, so this is your uh, performance index. Okay, this is your, this is the path constraint. Uh, all happening in terms of discrete time actually, and very easily if somebody wants to really see what is how it can be done and all that. Okay, this uh, oh sorry. Okay, 
this can be done uh, something like if you have x dot equal to f of x u then you can uh, you can do this uh, x k plus 1 minus x k by delta t this is the approximation of x dot and the right hand side is x k u k ok. And then you can write x k plus 1 is nothing but x k plus delta t times f of x k u k. So, okay, so, that is nothing but this is Euler integration actually ok. So, if you use Euler integration formula then you can see that x k plus 1 is nothing but some function ok f k ok of which is nothing but x k u k assuming delta t to be constant actually. This is how from a continuous time representation you will get a discrete time representation actually ok. And you can use various integration formulas to get there as well this ok. All right. So, this is uh, this is what I was talking actually. So, we have a similarly you can discretize any continuous time cost function as well uh, using this trapezoidal rules and all that you can uh, we can do that uh, and then write it an equivalent cost function for a continuous time problem as well. So, this is our discrete cost function and this is our uh, discrete state equation. So, with respect to these two ok, the, the augmented performance index can be written something like this j bar is nothing but this part plus summation of all that ok. And uh, this is uh, what we did here is earlier is lambda lambda t transpose times f minus x dot if you remember that in continuous time ok. But here in discrete time what we written what we write here is uh, lambda k plus 1 ok transpose times this one minus that one that is f o f k minus x k plus 1 is nothing but 0 that part that part is put here actually ok. And just a comment that multiplied associated with f k here f k minus x k plus 1 this is what is what is getting multiplied is lambda k plus 1 it is not uh, lambda k that is uh, one of the major uh, differences really. And that is done typically to get some nice results later basically ok. So, that means if you see an optimal control equivalence and all that actually that way then x k is equivalent I mean x of t is equivalent to x of k u of t is equivalent to u of k. But lambda of t is equivalent to lambda of k plus 1 really, it is not k. That is the difference from continuous time to discrete time really. Anyway, this is our augmented cost function, ok. And then we will follow with the necessary conditions of optimality and all that. So, for first you define in Hamiltonian h k is nothing but L plus lambda transpose f. So, L is nothing but L k plus lambda transpose this part, this, this part whatever you have it here that is what is represented there actually this yes, Hamiltonian h k. Yes. Remember it is now it is a function of x k u k and lambda k plus 1 and define something like this. Yes. Now, with respect to this definition j bar can be written something like this and here it, it is it is not from i to n minus 1, but we take it out from i plus 1 to n minus 1 and write the i separately basically this is just a multiple I mean manipulation sort of thing. Okay, so, this one okay, i to i plus 1 to n minus 1 okay, whatever we have here the very last one will also turn out to be lambda n transpose times x n that also is represent that is that also is separately written actually okay, here. Okay. The very first one is taken out and the very last one is last one is also taken out actually okay. last one is here and first one is here in between terms are written something like this actually. Next we want to examine the increment of j bar due to increments in all variables x k lambda k and u k. And uh, here the assumption again is the final time and that is uh, in discrete uh, notation it is nothing but n, n is fixed actually that is the that is the definition I mean that is the assumption here. So, we are talking about a fixed final time problem sort of thing actually. Anyway, so this is j bar which is given this one. By the way, I have taken all this material from Frank Lewis book actually. So, if somebody is interested, then they can then they can use this Frank Lewis book. He has a different versions of the book and all that, but I have used it for some for some of his earlier books on optimal control actually. Anyway, so this is uh, what it is. J bar is something like this actually. Now we are ready to apply our optimization conditions and all that. So, what you are interested in to see is the first deviation of J bar is equal to zero. Remember, there is no variation now these are all discrete variables actually. So, we talk about first deviation of j bar has to be equal to 0 and hence we are interested to see what expression it takes first first deviation of j bar. 
So, d j bar if you talk about uh, this expression happens because of several perturbations actually. Okay. Perturbation of j bar that is g d j bar happens because is, there can be a perturbation of d x n that I mean x n that is d x n there can be something like d lambda n there can be something like d x i d u y d lambda i plus 1 all sort of things. Actually. So, you have to see carefully this expression what all is a function of I mean j bar is function of what all variables and then keep on doing this uh, this partial derivative sort of thing and then write this expression actually. So, to, to begin with uh, let me explain one or two example one or two expressions if you see this expression especially the perturbation of j bar can come through the perturbation of either x n or lambda n actually. So, this this particular term. So, we write del del of this term del by del x n into d x n plus del by del phi I mean del by del lambda n into d lambda n of this this uh, square bracket sort of thing. So, if you take uh, ok if you take this expression ok you write it this is what we are analyzing actually. So, first I will write uh, this expression uh, something like uh, perturbation with respect to x n and then then perturbation with respect to lambda n so, that is what we find to do the first term is nothing but this ok first term is nothing but this because this entire term okay, del by del x n of the entire term is nothing but del phi by del x n minus lambda n ok this one transpose time d x n plus this del, del by del lambda n which is minus identity ok for this this does not contain any lambda n only this one contains lambda n. So, del by del lambda n into d lambda n that will give us this term actually x n transpose times d lambda n. Then we will turn to the next expression, next expression is a function of x i u i and lambda i. So, it can, the perturbation can come from all the all the in, I mean terms, we can write del uh, h i divided by del x i transpose times d x i plus del h i by del u i transpose times d u i plus del h i by del lambda i plus 1 transpose times d lambda i. They are all simply bookkeeping actually. You observe that this is a function of x n and lambda n, hence you took the partial derivatives that way. You observe that this is a function, this function can be a function of x i u i and lambda i plus 1. So, you do these three expressions that results in that and then coming to the last expression. Now, remember h k can be a function of everything else ok x k u k and lambda k plus 1 also basically. So, you account for that to account for that we take all the partial derivatives like that and then express in the in, in the form of this, like this actually ok. Remember this is uh, this this one will give us a perturbation with respect to lambda k also. Okay. And this will give something like h k is a function of lambda k plus 1. So, the, the perturbation will come from lambda k plus 1 because of this term and there is a perturbation of lambda k because of this term actually. Okay. So, it is just nothing but a very careful bookkeeping of what all things can happen from first derivative sense actually. Once you write it carefully then it is time to kind of uh, put them together wherever it is relevant things and all that there. So, then I, I keep the first term as it is and then the, this one whatever whatever you see here as it is like that actually and wherever possible I can I can combine that now and I can play around with this indice again. This is a k equal to i plus 1 to n, n minus 1 here it is i to n minus 1 that means wherever you see i terms if possible I can include that in within this term here also actually. Okay. If I separately write k equal to i outside then whatever terms are there I can bring it inside by putting the by changing the augmentation from i plus 1 to i here ok. So, that that careful notation if you can see here it is i plus 1 and here it is is i basically okay. that will observe two terms actually. And similarly, you can have a bookkeeping and then tell ok this this will be like this form this will be this form and that will be that form I I strongly suggest that all of you actually at least do one time this algebra it is fun to do and it is uh, it is good to do and it will give you a lot of confidence also what you are doing actually. So, for the sake of time I will not explain term by term but is uh, this algebra is correct actually. Okay. So, this has to be equal to 0 with respect to all possible deviations actually that means as before all the coefficients have to go to 0. Okay. Now, if you if you happen to if you notice that then uh, ok all the coefficient happens to 0. So, what about this this will give us nothing but the state equation del x k plus 1 is nothing but del s k by del lambda k plus 1 and what is del lambda k del s k by del lambda k plus 1 well, this is the only term. So, that is f k so, what you are talking is x k plus 1 is equal to f k that is that is nothing but the state equation that is how you get it there ok. Similarly, for the co-state equation you see this expression actually 
lambda k is nothing but del s k by del lambda del x k basically. So, that is what you will get quotient 1. Now, optimal control you will get from here del s k by del u k equal to 0 okay. and then boundary condition happens to be from, from this expression actually the lambda n del phi by del x n okay. that happens to be there. Anyway, so this, this, these are the set of equations that you will have to handle it. If you can carefully note that what you, what you heard earlier is the lambda dot is minus del s by del x and here it is lambda k equal to del s by del x. So, that means to retain this that, that lambda k plus 1 taking I mean taking lambda k plus 1 here helped us as arriving there actually. If you take lambda k then it, the expression will be something different. Okay. So, that is the beauty that uh, that some people agree that okay, there is a systematic representation of that actually that way. That is one thing. Second thing is uh, the lambda dot happened to be minus del s by del x. Here it is plus, it is not minus actually. Okay. All other things are similar, but this observation of this coasted equation should be noted very carefully actually. Okay. The state equation very similar to what we had, optimal control what to very similar to what we had, and boundary condition also very similar to what we had actually. Okay. But the coasted equation happens to be slightly different that is what you should to note it carefully actually. And again I emphasize lambda of t equivalent meaning comes through lambda of k plus 1 not lambda k that we should now never forget actually. All right, so this is how the necessary conditions and let us have an example to demonstrate how to use these necessary conditions and all that actually. So, we will start with we will take a linear system with a quadratic cost function essentially it is an LQR problem you can think about that, but you can, it is a kind of a a hard constraint problem. In other words, even though it is a scalar problem and all, what you are, what you are demanding that at k equal to n final time, x n should be equal to r n actually. Okay. So, this is the, the system dynamic, I mean this is the problem. We have a linear system dynamics and we are kind of coefficient. Objective is to minimize the control energy subject to this final condition. x n has to go to r n, there is no uh, choice for the other things. On the way, it has to minimize the control leases actually. So, with that formulation, we will proceed to the definition of Hamiltonian H k is nothing but L k plus lambda k plus 1 transpose times F k. Okay. L k, you can substitute what is that? Half of R times U k square. So, half of R times U k square plus lambda k plus 1, there is no transpose because it is only single equation anyway here. So, this is lambda k plus 1 into x k plus v u k that is from the system dynamics okay, that is the definition of part of it. And from optimality conditions you have this state coasted and in, in optimal control equations. So, state equation is given like x k plus 1 is x k plus v u k same state equation that we started with actually same thing. And the second equation is lambda I mean coasted equation lambda k is nothing but del s k by del x k which is equal to a times lambda k plus 1. Okay. And, and del h k by del u k happens to be something like this actually. Okay. Del h k you know right, h k is like that. So, del h k by del u k you will see the one term will come from here which is r times u k plus one term will come from here which is nothing but b times lambda k plus 1. Okay. So, essentially it is very close to what we know in continuous time, but it, the, the variables are slightly different and things like that actually. So, if you equate if you solve this equation 0 equal to r u k plus b lambda k plus 1 then u k happens to be something like minus v by r into lambda k plus 1 actually. Okay. So, very close to what we know before this kind of problems we have seen, seen examples also, but the only difference is it is not lambda t, but it replaces lambda k plus 1 actually. So, as long as we know lambda k plus 1 we have got the controller actually u k. Okay. The question is how do you know lambda k plus 1 actually. Okay. And also the boundary condition sense what you what you are having you have a initial boundary con initial condition which is fixed fixed I mean state is a fixed number sort of thing so dx naught is zero and final condition is also fixed x n has to be equal to r n so there is no deviation on that that is dx n has to be zero so these two happen to be the boundary the boundary condition that that acts on this problem actually so what we do we to go ahead and solve it so what we do first is you find lambda k from, from 5 and 8 so i mean whatever these equations are there now you try to solve it actually okay. so what you, what you, what you are having is uk is there okay so this uk expression you substitute here okay. so you write the state equation like this basically okay 
just for the sake of simplicity that b square by r you define gamma and then write it that way just for, for the sake of simplicity sort of thing. Now that is fine I just that is the steady equation but you cannot really go ahead and solve it to uh, this equation because the x k is left x k plus 1 is left hand side uh, right hand side lambda k plus 1 and things like that. But what happens here this particular problem this uh, this equation happens to be independent of state actually this this is self contained sort of thing lambda k is nothing but a times lambda k plus 1. So, we can solve it because it is a I mean difference equation involving only lambda. So, you can solve this difference equation remember it is a difference equation it is not differential equation actually okay. is this difference equation has a solution like that it is very easy to derive also in other words if you know this this recursive relationship sort of thing right. So, you have lambda k is given to something like this that means if I if I just start from there okay which is nothing but lambda let us say n minus 1 is nothing but a times lambda n using using this relationship what I am talking here. Right. So, similarly if I take lambda n minus 2 is nothing but a into n minus a into lambda n minus 1 which is nothing but a square times lambda n minus 1 okay. Similarly, I can write lambda n minus 3 is nothing but a q times lambda n minus 1 lambda well it is that. a q times lambda n basically ok s sorry this is another mistake also there it is minus 1 should not be there okay. all right. So, this is this is what it is actually okay. you start with uh, this expression then you can write lambda n minus 1 is nothing but a times lambda n and lambda n minus 2 is a times lambda n minus 1, but n minus 1 is again that I can substitute it back happens to be a square lambda n similarly lambda n minus 3 happens to be a q lambda n and things like that. So, as in, in general I can write a solution lambda k plus 1 is nothing but that kind of thing actually ok. But the, this this solution is ok, but the problem here is lambda n is unknown and hence the difficulty actually ok. Lambda ok remember lambda n is not known to us actually. So, otherwise you could have gone ahead to solve it actually. But anyway, so now what you do is you have this expression now. So, we substitute it back here Okay. this expression is available. So, lambda k plus 1 is here we substitute it back to get it something like this actually ok. Now, what happens now lambda n we do not know correct that is not a problem, but lambda n is not a dynamic variable it is just a number sort of thing actually. So, there is some sort of a number even though we do not know it it is, it, is, it is not a changing number sort of thing it is a fixed number. So, we can interpret this difference equation state equation as some some sort of a difference equation with a forcing function sort of thing. So, this is right. So, with the forcing function being this one, okay, this is a difference equation with a forcing function coming from this actually. Okay. So, this equation we can have a solution if you are interested, you can derive it yourself or you can see some sort of a difference equation uh, math books and all that. That will tell you very clearly that if you have a forcing function like this in a difference equation, then the solution turns out to be like that actually. Okay. Remember, lambda is still unknown, the solution form we know now basically. Okay. So, this turns out to be you can write it something like this okay. right and then you have this coefficient geometric series sort of thing right. Yeah, once you have this kind of a this kind of a summation term is nothing but 1 1 plus 1 by a square plus 1 by a fourth like that actually. Okay. So, this term has is a geometric formula. So, using that this series formula I can write it this way actually. So, I got a some sort of a solution for the state the only problem still here is lambda n is not known. So, x n if you if you get a x k like that I can also write x n equal to something ok ok and this expression I can define some terms and all that. So, that I can write in a simplified sense actually ok. So, x n is nothing but some coefficient times x naught minus some other coefficient times lambda n actually and the here is the case. Now, what we know in the problem definition x n has to be equal to r n ok. So, now we have a, have a, have a formulation have a, we have a solution which talks about something into x naught which we know and something into lambda n which we do not know. However, x n has to be equal to r n that is the constraint. So, if you have to put r n here then you can actually solve for lambda n that is what it is done here. If I substitute uh, x n as r n here and then solve for lambda n from this equation then that is what I get actually. Okay, now, we got a solution for lambda n actually. 
Once you get a solution, your costed equation is well defined now because costed equation happened to be this expression. Now lambda n is available. So you can substitute that and hence you get lambda k and finally the optimal control happens to be a function of lambda k, right? U k. Uh, okay, let me see that this one. Okay. Once you get lambda k solution, you can lambda k plus 1 is equivalent to that, then you can put it back into there. So, all that is done and you can write it as u k is nothing but something like that actually. Yeah. Now, what can you observe here? There are a couple of nice observations first, I mean the first observation is uh, in this problem both the final state as well as the optimal control that means uh, x, x n which is r n which is a fixed number sort of thing as well as the optimal control expression what you see are actually independent of the weighting function r, weighting matrix r. This is r n, r n is the reference signal at the end and nothing to do with the cost function r. See we started with a cost function r actually here. So, this cost from this r does not play any role actually. Okay. Okay. And this is also logical because uh, ultimately your drive is to, uh, your aim is to take x to some final desired value and on the way you are not uh, kind of comparing with state minimization and control minimization. Your objective is only only to do control minimization. So, whether you um, minimize some sort of a u k square or some uh, some factor of u k square does not matter actually, some fraction of u k square or whatever that is actually. So, essentially the control is independent of that yeah, which is uh, logically makes sense as well. Another observation is the control is actually an open loop control because what you see here it actually depends on x naught nothing else actually and r n which is okay so of course there is that is where you want to go is a function of x naught and r n and everything else is a system parameter a and v but it has nothing to do with state uh, some sort of a solution basically. So in other words u k we did not get as a something like minus k times x k sort of thing. Okay. So, we did not get that actually, but essentially it can be done, it, it uh, will see that in a, in a while that uh, L, I mean discrete LQR setting it can be done actually, but this particular way of getting getting it we need not get a state feedback solution, we got a open loop solution actually. Now, the optimal state trajectory somebody can ask like that then you can go back to this expression what you had for x k, okay. x k solution is available you can substitute lambda n and you can get this. Uh, x k uh, optimal state equation also basically. Okay. Optimal state trajectory can be dictated by this, this, this is nothing but the state equation by the way. What you have is x k plus 1 is nothing but x k plus b u k okay. and b times u k happens to be something even u k you know and b times u k b will cancel here whatever you have is, is nothing but that actually. That's all. So, this uh, if it, and this is I mean we want to do not need a solution for x k because I mean this is a sequential equation sort of thing, the recursive equation sort of thing. If the moment you start with x naught and you just put some formula here, k varies from 0 to n minus 1 anyway. So, if you just put uh, varying that you keep on getting numbers here basically. Okay, if you want a solution in x k then that is that is the expression that you need to use directly, okay, but uh, otherwise this is good enough actually. Okay. But also remember this, this one the state trajectory is uh, again independent of both r and v. Okay and all sort of things actually yeah, some the next naught star is nothing but x naught or x n star is are in the sometimes when you see books star notations these are all optimal trajectory sort of thing. So, whenever you get an optimal trajectory sometimes people put star there just to differentiate between non optimal to optimal trajectory sort of thing actually. An optimal cost can also be given as something like this. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, again it turns out that okay, this is uh, this is nothing but this 0 input response and the things like that actually what you call each other to, but I will not talk too much on that. The whole idea here is because the cost function is like this, the moment this is different from this, this is nothing but 0 input response, Okay, this is not difficult, difficult I can also tell you about that actually why not. So, you have this x k plus 1 is nothing but uh, a x k plus b u k. So, when u k turns out to be 0, okay, Okay, all of the UKs turns out to be zero. Okay, then then what happens? A x k plus one is nothing but a x k. Okay, so what will your trajectory be? If you start with the, with the k equal to zero, then it is x one equal to x naught. 
and then x2 equal to x1 I mean a x0 and similarly x2 equal to a x1 which is nothing but a square x0 like that actually right. You proceed like that what you discuss something very close to what you discussed before and ultimately you will tell okay that if I if I land up with x n where it should be it should be a n minus a n times x0 using this formula sort of thing what you have here. So, that is your 0 input response basically if you do not have any control that is where the trajectory will evolve actually right. Now, with control something something this is the cost function that means, if this is this one what you see here is very different from this then obviously, your cost is going to be more which is very very natural also suppose you I mean this picturally speaking suppose your 0 input response takes you there, but your target is somewhere here then you will get some certain something like a deviation like that. If your target is somewhere here, then you require more control to come here, like that actually. So, the, the, whatever this difference plays a role, whatever difference you see here actually, you know, that is the message here, which, which makes a lot of sense also. Anyway, so now there is a different concept, uh, what we got is a generic framework. Now, is there any equivalence of discrete time LQR also? And the problem is something like this. We have in general we have something like this x k plus 1 is a k x k plus b k u k and performance index is very close to what you have seen in continuous time ok. All right. So, this uh, this i may not be needed actually start with initial condition then this i is needed otherwise ok fine. So, J is something like that and this, this is like this actually. So, your Hamiltonian definition is nothing but HK is nothing but LK plus lambda K plus 1 transpose times FK. So, LK is nothing but this coming from here and lambda K plus 1 times coming K, I mean FK, FK is nothing but that. This is what your HK Hamiltonian K. Now, what is the necessary conditions? Necessary conditions will tell that the state equation, co-state equation, optimal control and boundary conditions of the thing. We know that. So, the state equation is like this which is already given to us ok. The co-state equation is lambda k equal to del h k by del x k. So, this expression now h k is, is available from here. So, del h k by del x k is nothing but q k x k from here and a k transpose times lambda k plus 1 from here ok. So, that is what it is there is no minus sign remember that again lambda k is nothing but q k x k plus a k transpose times lambda k plus 1 sort of thing. Then optimal control equation okay, del s k by del u k equal to 0. So, if you apply that s k is again here. So, del s k by del u k is one term is r k u k other term will be b k transpose lambda k plus 1 ok. So, this happens to be something like this actually. So, so the boundary condition happens to be lambda n equal to s n x n actually ok. Anyway, so this ex this expression h del s k by del u k what I was talking is uh, something r k u k plus b k transpose times lambda k plus 1 that is equal to 0 ok. So, obviously, what ok let me write it otherwise ok r k u k plus b k transpose times lambda k plus 1 is equal to 0. So, if you solve this from for u k this is what you get actually ok very close to what we know before in continuous time the only difference is not lambda t, but it is lambda k plus 1 which is anyway lambda t is equivalent to lambda k plus 1. So, that is what it is actually. The boundary condition happens to be something like this actually. So, now, you have to use all these to derive some sort of a Riccati equation equivalent in discrete time actually. So, again we assume that lambda k has to be like p k times x k. Then what happens uh, you can go ahead and tell okay x k plus 1 what you get steady equation here nothing but a k a k x k ok plus b k u k, but b k times u k, u k is nothing but this, this is what it is and lambda k plus 1 is nothing but p k plus 1 x k plus 1. So, all this all this is substituted here. You start with x k plus b u k, u, u k is like that minus r inverse b transpose lambda k plus 1 and then lambda k plus 1 from this expression is nothing but p k plus 1 times x k plus 1. So, that is also substituted here. Now, what you can do is you see some x k plus 1 here x k plus 1 here. So, you can take it to one side and then write x k plus 1 is something something times x k plus 1 is this way equal to a k x k and hence x k plus 1 can be given as some sort of some some expression like that which is nothing but a forward, forward recursion actually 
Okay. Then what is what about Cosred equation? Cosred equation turns out to be like this: QK lambda k is nothing but QK xk plus AK transpose times lambda k plus one. Lambda k plus one again PK plus one times xk plus one, and then this lambda k is PK xk. So put substitute all that. Now xk plus one we just substituted. We just derived this expression. So this instead of whatever xk plus one is there, I can write it that way, and then. Everything happens. P K X K is nothing but something big matrix actually multiplied with X K, and since X K is not zero in general, and this equation holds good for all straight sequences for any X I, that means it is valid for X one, X two, X three everywhere actually. For all uh, all of those X will not be zero because you are not talking about a equilibrium condition sort of thing. Okay, you uh, you I mean because this copy I mean this because this is not zero. If I take everything into one side and write it equal to zero where X K is not zero, then obviously Using our standard philosophy, the coefficient has to be zero, and that is essentially equivalently stating that it is nothing but PK. What we get here is equivalent to that actually. Okay, whatever you get here. Okay, so essentially, if you see this equation, it is nothing but a Ricard equation. It's a backward uh, recursion sort of thing. If you know PK plus one, you can calculate PK. Okay, so this is this is what it is actually. So Essentially, what we got is some sort of a discrete time Ricard equation, some sort of a backward recursion, which, is, which makes a lot of sense comparable to what we know earlier, earlier already basically. This is what it is actually. Now you can you can stop here, but you can also use this this matrix inverse lemma sort of thing, which is available and many people use it for variety of reasons. And then using if you use this lemma, then this expression what you have here. Can we can we express as something like this? Just just substitute, just identify what is A, B, D, C in this expression, okay? And then A is nothing but identity, for example. So like that actually, put it there, and then substitute expand, and you'll get it something like this actually. This is popularly known as this this Ricard equation in discrete time sort of thing. Yeah. Now what about boundary condition actually? So P n is nothing but I mean lambda n is nothing but P n x n, which is equal to S f times x n from boundary condition. So P n is S f actually. Okay. So what you what you are getting here is same Ricard equation sort of ideas with same boundary condition basically. So we start with the boundary condition and do this backward recursion sort of thing. Okay. Now what about finally the control? Control is nothing but uh, this minus R inverse uh, V transpose lambda k plus one sort of thing. So k U k is is this expression and lambda k plus one what you got here. Okay. Wait a second. Okay, here lambda k plus one is nothing but p k plus one times x k x k plus one sort of thing. So that lambda k plus one is nothing but p k plus one times x k plus one actually. Okay. All right. So anyway, so this is uh, what I mean here is u k is equal to like this, and then you substitute lambda k plus one is p k plus one plus uh, into x k plus one. X k plus one, you can substitute using this uh, the state equation and all, and then you can see that you have this U k appearing both sides. You take everything to one side, and then keep the X k in the right hand side. And ultimately, you can write U k is nothing but this inverse, whatever you see, this inverse times this matrix, okay, times X k. So whatever you get, all the things here, if you do, if you do that, there is nothing but the gain matrix, yeah, essentially a Kalman gain sort of thing, okay. So essentially, we can again write U k is nothing but minus k k times x k, where k k comes from this expression actually. Okay. So very close to what we know earlier, okay, but not exactly one to one sort of thing actually. Now it interestingly turns out that in discrete formulation, this continuous I mean this discrete time Ricard equation need not be very well behaved as a continuous time Ricard equation really. Okay. <coughs> In other words, the sequence can have several type of behaviors, and the possibilities include something like this: you start with p n, it can actually converge towards zero, it can go up, uh, I mean, go to infinity sort of thing, or it can, I mean, converge to some p, some p infinity, which is actually non-zero. Okay, and it can have no convergence at all, also basically. Okay. You understand? There can be four possibility: it can converge to some zero value, it can converge to a Non-zero value, it can converge to a strictly positive value, okay, or it can there can be no convergence also basically sort of thing. 
But anyway, that is uh, that's not the point. Point here is uh, every time you apply this, you may not get uh, nice solution sort of things. Okay, but if P K converges, okay, then for uh, large negative K, evidently if P K converges, right? Converges means what? It converges to some value basically. If it converges, then obviously it will get a constant value actually. Okay, so in that case, the algebraic Riccati equation yes, there is this the spelling mistake actually again. Okay, yeah. This Riccati equation, okay. The, the algebraic Riccati equation becomes this this expression actually, okay. and also this algebraic Riccati equation can have non-positive, semi-definite, uh, non-symmetric, and even complex solution. So this kind of things are not very good to see, but uh, but it's a fact actually. You have to live with that. Actually. And in the limiting solution, if, if the if I mean, if the limiting solution to A R E, that means this constant P matrix exists, then ultimately we can write the gain as something like this, which is nothing but a constant gain. And in that case, U K is nothing but minus K K. Okay, so in other words, just because you have a formula, it doesn't mean that it it is a very good, nice, well-behaved formula basically. So all these conditions are met, then you can write it that way actually. Anyway, so this is the this is the heart of heart of this uh, this L Q R thing basically. I mean. Uh, L Q R using discrete time actually. Now anyway, as I told in the beginning, that there are some primitive ideas of L Q R design through least square formulation sort of thing. And let us have a glimpse of that before moving further actually. So this is idea is very appealing and very simple actually rather. So you have a system dynamics. The whole difficulty started because we had to deal with states in addition to control actually. Okay, but how about representing all state vectors? In terms of control vector, then everything we can substitute in the cost function also is function of uh, states at different grid points, and then talk about some sort of a static optimization, which will optimize, which will minimize this cost function, because it will all be now function of uh, control only basically. How do we do that? This is something like this: x k plus one is nothing but this one. We know that. So let us say we start with x one, which is nothing but initial condition. So x one is equal to All zeros and all u's at these are all the controls at various grid points actually. Okay. So everything zero plus identity times x one. So that means the first row is nothing but x one equal to x one sort of thing. Okay. Now x two when I put a k equal to one, this is x two equal to a times x one plus b times. I mean a times x one plus b times c one basically. Okay. Forget this k, k, and all that. Let's see. This is a time invariant uh, sort of thing, or either way, or I, I consider the entries of this actually as time varying thing also. Basically, either way. So let's be compatible. We just take uh, some sort of a time invariant a and b basically. Okay. If you do that, then it is x one is nothing but x one, and then x two is nothing but b times u one plus a times x one. So b times u one, nothing else. Okay. Plus A times x one here, okay. and similarly, if you continue, finally you will get x n is nothing but this expression actually. We'll start with uh, something like a n minus one times b again recursively, multiply again and again, again and again, apply applying that. Ultimately, we'll come up with this actually. Now the question here is, is and what happens here is all these variables can be substituted as all the variables in in u n, u one to u n, I mean u n minus one really, and x one. So wherever this 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 values appear that x one x two x three x four up to x n, I can always substitute through this equivalent expression of the right hand side, and then then uh, what we interpret is this uh, optimization problem as a optimization problem of these variables only basically. So now we uh, we can accept the idea of static optimization and talk about solution of a static optimization problem actually. So this is what is listed here. So what is what do you do is substitute the state variable in terms of the control variable and initial condition. An initial condition happens to be a fixed number, fixed vector sort of thing. So that doesn't play role in optimization. No, nothing that you can vary for x one actually. Okay. Well, anyways, then you can do uh, you can substitute that uh, this expression back into your uh, I mean uh, optimization formulation and interpret everything. Okay, this this cost function and interpret that cost function now as a function of only u actually. This constant has already been taken care of while formulating this, by the way. Yeah. But the problem here is actually it results to a large-dimensional parameter optimization. And what is parameter here is control vector actually. 
the control values at grid point 1, 2, 3, 4, these are nothing but the parameters. So, if you really want an accurate good solution, it requires a very huge dimensional static optimization problem. Depends on the number of grids into the number of control, into the dimension of the control vector really. If you have 3 controls and something like 1000 grid points, then it will, you will have a 3000 variable, variables for optimization sort of thing actually. And typically the number of grid points are not 1000, but it is a lot more than 1000. So, you will have uh, that many variables and, uh, and it is not very good to see that or handle that kind of a optimization problem actually. So, that is what is the problem, it results in a large dimensional optimization problem which is actually not very good to see. So, that is why it is not very popular also basically. But this is essentially the idea of this this transcription method what you have uh, what you can see. I mean the if you can correlate very uh, I mean very quickly then it is nothing but the whole idea of having the grid points and then cons constructing a large dimensional optimization problem or static optimization problem is nothing but direct transcription ideas actually. Yeah. Anyway, so the problem is like this and it is not that kind of that popular actually. Now, the final thing before we stop this lecture is what I promised is uh, how do you use this discrete LQR setting for common tracking problems as well actually. Okay. So, here the problem setting is like this, so you have this is the state equation and you have a output equation also and objective is that output your y k should track some reference output z k, z k is available and y k should, should be able to track z k actually. Okay. So, what is our performance index? Performance index can be C remember what is y, y n is nothing but C n x n and that should be as close to z n as possible. So, that is how we formulate a cost function outside the summation sign is like this C n x n minus z n transpose s n times this actually. On the way this deviation has to be minimum also basically. So, if you take uh, C x k y k minus z k that has to be minimum and what is y k? C k x k. So, y k minus z k is nothing but c k minus c k x k minus z k. So, that has to be minimum actually and also we want control minimum. So, this is how it is possible. Now, we follow with this uh, this Hamiltonian conception also. We have this h of k which is, which you can uh, write l k plus lambda k plus 1 transpose times f. So, this is nothing but your l k plus lambda k plus 1 times k plus 1 transpose times x k plus 1 that is nothing but x k plus v k u k basically, our transpose f basically. Okay. Now, what you do is state equation, co state equation, optimal control, boundary condition all that we apply okay. and remember the difference here, the basic fundamental difference here is, is the cost function actually. We have instead of a standard x transpose q x, you have something like this and outside instead of arbitrary I mean quadratic expression, we have that actually, that is the only difference. Okay. So, we apply all that. Now, you see lambda k is nothing but the I mean this expression basically, where it is lambda k is a function of x k, it is a function of z k as well, it is also a function of lambda k plus 1 actually. Okay. This is a straightforward algebra from uh, from the basic principle sort of thing. Then optimal control del s k by del u k has to be 0. So, that explains that we again land up with the same expression there actually. And boundary condition of course, you know del phi by del x n which is actually equal to all this expression because phi expression is something like this actually. All right. So, now what happens here the fundamental difference is lambda k equal to p k x k will not do the job. You will need also some sort of a time bearing additional term which will which will hopefully do the job actually. That will try to track the, the, that command that will help tracking the command uh, z k which is coming externally. Remember the problem is not to track the zero signal; it's to, to track some sort of a non-zero signal actually. Okay. Now the state equation turns out to be something very similarly. What we have done before, we'll proceed the same step. The only where wherever lambda k or lambda k plus one is there, you have to be slightly careful to use this expression with this bias term, this minus zk sort of thing. Okay. That's what is done here. You can start with state equation. You end up with lambda k plus one. Substitute is uh, lambda k plus one in this expression. What you get here? Okay, and then again you have x k plus 1 here, x k plus 1 here and then just try to sort it out, take it to one side and then solve it and then tell okay, x k plus 1 has to be the inverse of this matrix times whatever is left out that is a k x k plus this, this term actually, okay, which is coming from this term. 
So, essentially we will end up with x k plus 1 is something like this which is again a forward recursion formula actually ok x x k plus e k e k is defined something like this basically. So, you what you have here is i plus e k e k plus 1 in whole inverse times x k plus e k g k plus 1 actually. This is uh, again exactly the similar sort of idea similar steps and all that, but you have taken a you have to be slightly careful to uh, to substitute lambda k s and lambda k plus 1s properly basically. So, with that uh, the coasted equation turns out to be something like this okay. and we are defining some terms and all that direction. So, lambda k is a function of x k and z k and lambda k plus 1. Right, so that is uh, what you see here. So, this is what v k x k minus w k z k plus k transpose times lambda k plus one. So that is substituted here. Okay, let's put it here. And lambda k plus one now we substitute whatever that is. And then you you know that actually this x k plus one you have actually just solved it. So this x k plus one you can substitute here. Okay. And then lambda k is nothing but p k x k minus z k. That is your coasted equation, right? This one. Uh, where are we actually? Okay, x k plus one is something like this. Lambda k is something like this, and p k and x k plus one I substituted. Okay, I get it something like that. Okay. Now, if you if you substitute the coasted equation, then this lambda k is nothing but that because that is the definition, right? We started like this, so you substitute like that, and left hand side, right hand side like that actually. So rearranging the terms, it turns out to be there is something into x k plus all these terms. It should be equal to zero. And again, I, I strongly suggest all of you to, to kind of derive all these to for your for your clarity and things like that. You can pause this uh, whenever you see this lecture. You can pause it here and then try to derive it. These expressions yourself actually probably. Anyway, so we do that, and then this is what it is. You get of get some expression like this, and since it it should hold good for all x which is non-zero and things like that, all sort of variations possible. Uh, then what you can see is the coefficient has to be zero. That uh, that will give us the expression for p k happens to be something like this, and g k happens to be something like this. Remember, uh, g k can be known only with the with the available information about g k plus one. Okay. So this is a backward recursive formula again actually. Okay. So boundary condition you can go there, and lambda n turns out to be p n x n minus g n. Okay. So, and then uh, lambda x n you can substitute all the variables uh, whatever you know there and then this leads to this okay, if you if you con consider this I mean equate this coefficients and things like that you, then p n happens to be like this and g n happens to be this this expression actually that is what is written here. Okay. So, what you are what you are getting is some sort of a backward recursive relationship for p k and g k because p k is a function of p k plus 1 and g k is a function of g k plus 1 actually. So, these two backward recursion relationship also remains these boundary conditions actually. So, starting from these boundary condition you can uh, compute keep on computing this p k s and g k s basically. Now, the control solution finally, that is what your our main aim uh, u k equal to minus r inverse r k inverse b k transpose times lambda k plus 1 and this actually k, that lambda k plus 1 you can substitute it like this and then ok x k plus 1 you can substitute again. Okay, x k plus 1 is nothing but the state equation. So, that is a x k plus b u k sort of thing you can substitute here and then you expand the terms okay, x, x k term and then u k term and g k plus 1 terms like that. Now, you have a u k in the left hand side and u k in the right hand side. So, you combine them together and then solve for u k actually and u k will turn out to be something like this which is and this part of the solution can be defined as some sort of a gain matrix and this gain matrix turns out to be all these expression and then there is a bias gain matrix sort of thing basically this is a reference signal remember g yeah. this is bias right g starts for g starts from something like this actually the g k is somewhere here. So, the this bias term yeah. coefficient actually is given this way. So, essentially you land up with a formula which is which will tell you that u k is not only minus k into x k k minus k k into x k but we have an additional term which tells you lk plus lk times gk plus 1 actually which makes sense because you want to track some sort of a signal reference signal actually yeah. that's it as i i mean in this particular lecture we, we I, I wanted to give some sort of an overview 
of, uh, of uh, discrete optimal control followed by discrete LQR and there are many things around that. But now with the advancement of uh, these digital computers and all that uh, you can actually implement any continuous time control formulas with a very small grid size also and then the discrete optimal control will have very close meaning as what is the uh, what is continuous optimal control as well actually. So, with that knowledge we will uh, stop this lecture and also remember that this discrete LQR formulation and discrete optimal control formulation all that we will use it at some point of time later in a, in a slightly different settings actually to come up with numerical algorithms. Uh, for nonlinear optimal control also basically. So, with that motivation I will stop here, thank you for your attention.